welcome to Live at Five. Happy Friday. Friday, 14th of October. Very special guest today, world-renowned magician, Helder Gimares. I've probably completely ruined his surname because, as we know, French is my speciality. That's true. But we will discuss that in a bit. A lot of but news. But you didn't say he's from Verso. He is from Verso. Verso. There is so much news. So much news. There's so much news. I don't know what the biggest story of it is, so I'm just going to go through it. You just go through. There's so much going on. Yeah. So much going on. I don't know where to begin. I'm going to start here. Eric Peterson is taking over for Alex Brightman in School of Rock. Yeah. Starting November 7th. We're going to be sad to see Alex go. Sad to see we Alex love him. Go. But welcome, Eric. Welcome, Eric. Also, a lot of switcheroos in the cast going on because obviously the kids, they're getting big, so they're graduating. So it really is the second year of School of Rock. Um, so take a look at our story there. Lots of lots going up of a grade. Things, going yeah. up a grade. Nicholas Christopher is going to take on George Washington and Hamilton as Chris Jackson leaves the show on November 15th. Nicholas Christopher is also going into Miss Saigon. Yeah. So he's in there for he's like six busy. weeks. And it's sort of one of those things. Is a Broadway show is like buses. You get you book none and then suddenly you get big two huge ones at once. It's amazing. That's right. Just like buses. I have never heard that. Um, I'm really you excited. That? That, no, but I love it. I you love won't. it. You lived in London. I did. It's like men are like buses. You either have none or you have ten. It's way to go. Anyway, anyway um, Cheryl Lee Ralph, yeah. who I love, an original dream girl from Dream Girls, is joining Wicked as Madame Morrible on November 1st. Two original dream girls on Broadway at the same time. We've got a holiday in the color purple. Ryan McPhee's head is blown. It's My head. Everyone. So Everyone. exciting. Yeah. So exciting. We have a new vlogger. We do. Mark Salas, who is taking over as Frankie Valley in Jersey Boys for the end of the run. The final Frankie is going to be our new Broadway.com vlogger. Very exciting. It starts on Tuesday and it's called Walk Like a Man. Which is which is a song. You yeah, know, it's Jersey Boys. I don't you know, forget about it. I forget yeah. about it. We don't need to explain that. It's fine. Um, there's so much more news. So Tony much more administration news. committee met for the first time yeah. this round, this Broadway season. Um, they, we have a new Broadway theater. That's pretty exciting. Which is very cool. So they ruled on Cats, they ruled on Paramore, and they ruled that the Hudson Theatre, perhaps unsurprisingly, just under no, a thousand really seats. but it's still awesome. Uh, it's a new venue, as it were. It's just co coming back into Broadway. Um, that has been ruled a Broadway theatre, which means that, of course, Jake Gyllenhaal's Burn This. It's when a Broadway it opens show. spring, will be a Broadway show, and Jake Gyllenhaal deserves a Tony nomination this time around. I'm telling you, he Let's was so good in Constellations. First, but okay, so he we'll deserved say. it last time but around. You, okay, that's true. Uh, Rebecca Naomi Jones, who recently sat in this chair. Yes, and she told us there was something that she couldn't talk about, and now we know what it is. She's joining the cast of Significant Other on Broadway. Yeah, congratulations, congratulations to her. She's good. always working. She's amazing. Heisenberg good. opened last night, starring Mary Louise yeah. Parker and Dennis Arntz. We've got some gorgeous pictures of that as well as a little soundbite from MLP. And speaking of Mary Louise Parker, we ask you to rank your favorite Mary Louise Parker role on Culturalist, which is really hard because she works a lot and does, does great work. work. Great work. Okay, we love Tom Stoppard. We love Tom Stoppard. Um, obviously, Tony-winning playwright from the UK, legendary. Yes, and so we're, we hear that Travesty, starring Tom Hollander, is circling Broadway, eyeing Broadway, so we'll see if that it, comes through. It's currently playing at the Menier Chocolate Factory, which is where The Colour Purple, the recent revival, Tiny which is now on Broadway, started out. It's got an incredible reputation. So this really is one to watch, and I'm trying to sort my tickets. I'm going back to London next month for School of Rocks. I'm going to try and see that one because, yeah. There's it's another good. exciting thing going on in the UK. Damien Lewis, yep. who's an Emmy winner. Homeland. Everyone knows, everyone knows Billions. Homeland. It's going to star in Edward Albee's The Goat or Who is Sylvia, which Bill Pullman originated on Broadway. This is a very controversial play that Albee wrote. Um, it'll play the Theatre Royal Haymarket, starring in March. Most prestigious playhouse in London. Very beautiful yeah. place. And it will open in April. And we're about to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the revival of Chicago on Broadway. That's next month. Yeah. So in anticipation of that, they made a vinyl record of the cast I recording. Mean, that definitely That's a great collector's item. Great present for any Broadway buffs. And yes. I just have to give Jeffrey a shout out here. I did hear that Sunset Boulevard could be coming back to Broadway soon. Um, yes, Jeffrey, if you look on the site, the rumor is that it will be coming um, at the beginning of next year, and I can't possibly comment more, but thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> on that note, I'm going to make way All right. for our guest. So we'll see you next week, you guys. I'm going to magic up a magician here, Hilda Gimarez, and I've ruined your surname, <laughs> That's but I'm called I'm Imogen, and everybody ruins my name. Imogen. Here. So, Helder. Helder Imogen, that's me. How, how do you say your name properly? Helder Gimarez. Huge, huge, 
huge magician. You won all sorts of awards, and you're in, doing Verso off Broadway. I'm playing a show in uh, off Broadway, New World Stages called uh, Verso. And how's that? How's that treating? How's how's life in, in New York? Because you you live in LA most I live in LA. Yes, so yes. It's pretty cool. I like. I, right. I really like New York. Fall actually, fall season treating fall you well. Fall season, yes, yes. I like the fall. I like getting chill a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. Actually, I like I like very much New York. Now you have a background in theatre and acting, so do you want to talk to me a bit about that? Because I guess you're incorporating that into your magic and yeah, I do, I uh, I love uh, I've always loved uh, uh, live performance of every kind, and and so the three things that I always loved was is magic first and, and foremost. Uh, then I love comedy, and I like stand up comedy a lot and improv improv uh, comedy. And I love theater, and so the show is a little bit about the mix of all those things together. So there is a little bit of theatricality. Yeah. It's not theater per se, but there is theatricality in the show. Then there is also the magic part, of course, which is the big component, and uh, there is a, a bit of humor also involved. And um, is there like audience participation? There is a it lot go? of audio participation. Okay. Some people come on stage, some people participate right. from their seats. There so is a point where almost everyone in the crowd can participate, actually. So do you, I mean, so for people who love audience participation and people who don't, are there any places you should sit? Or do you just there, pick There is everyone? no safe place no, in no the house. No, no safe place. No, but, but I have picked. to say this. I, 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 one of the things when I do uh, a show is I'm very careful about that too because I don't want people to, to come on stage and yeah. feel embarrassed. So most of the audience participation is actually from their seats. And right. if, I, if I understand that they don't want to participate, I don't force anyone to participate. You don't have to get no. on stage. No. No. Yeah, no. So, so that's all right. Um, and you've worked with Neil Patrick Harris. I work, yes, yeah. yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and has he been to the, see the show yet? No. Or, no. Yes, but he's also the part of the Magic Circle as well. I mean, how the was magic, that experience? Uh, yeah, he was the president of the Magic yeah. Castle for a while, yes. How's, yeah. How was that experience when you were working Working with him very well, yeah. He was very nice and uh, and uh, he did, uh, I think, a great job in the, in the, in the, in the last show uh, directing it and it was a really cool experience. Um, so you won, you were the world champion of card magic age 23, yep. youngest ever. How did you begin? I mean, how did you decide that magic was for you? Was it something, I mean, it must have been as a kid. Yes, I started very it. young. I started when I was four. Uh, my, uh, my father does magic as a hobby and oh, that okay. was, that's how it started. And I, um, I just started like learning from him and then I start having books about it and reading more and pursuing it. So that's how it all started when I was very, very, very young. Um, and David wants to know who are your influences or inspirations? Uh, I have different kinds of uh, inspirations. I would say that magic-wise, which mm -hmm. is probably the question. Like yeah. My biggest idol is a magician from Spain called Juan Tamariz. Okay. That's, that's and you're from Portugal. Right? I'm from Portugal, yeah. yes. Uh, but uh, for me, he's like the, 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 the coolest. Uh, magician and, and uh, like he, he creates a feeling of magic that is pretty awesome. Now the internet on some levels has been good to you, you've got that viral TED talk yep. video that you gave, I mean massive number of views, um, but I was reading the other day that some magicians are having a few problems with the internet in the sense that it's revealing the secrets, that if you google too, too far down you can find, find out the tricks of the trade. Where, where do you sit on it? Do you love it? Do you love it? Do you hate it? To be completely honest yeah. with you, I don't care. It's uh, I. There is a part of me that thinks the the best way of experience magic is just to experience mm -hmm. it because that's what, as a magician, that's what I try to do. I try to give people this feeling and this experience of magic. So for people that go to a show or see a video trying to work how things happen, it's fine. But it's it's for me as pointless as trying to see what, how many. Uh, uh, ease there is in a song or something, okay. you know, like it's it's that type of feeling. So I don't necessarily uh, encourage people to do that, but if, if that's the way they have pleasure, go ahead and, 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 and do it. Uh, but that's not the goal I yeah. have with with uh, with uh, with my performances, with my creation. Why do you think people love magic so much? Because I mean, this has been throughout the ages, hasn't it? I think there is a natural curiosity on uh, how things work. I yeah. think part of it is that. And then there, I think there is the other part that magic, there is a hope in magic. When magic is well done and well performed and, and the, you have the feeling of magic, especially in a room, seated in a room with people and you have this feeling that you have experienced something that is impossible, 
that makes you rethink a lot of what you know about the world too. Yeah. So in that level, I think there is a very there is a human quality on, on that uh, sense, and um, and I think there is like also purity on 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 the performance of magic when it's well done. That uh, is is uh, I would say it's come equivalent of seeing someone. Uh, singing really well, you know, you have that moment when you you feel someone is doing this thing for you, uh, which doesn't I don't think think with with magic actually happens as often mm -hmm. as with music, but uh, but for me that's what attracts me to 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 magic. So Versa starts in Portugal, is that right? Yes, we did yeah. the the show for the first time in January for two weeks. There. So are Portuguese audiences different from American audiences in the Very way they different. react? Yes, yeah, and certain so things, so. certain things, little jokes, little moments of the show. Uh, sometimes it's funnier here, sometimes it's funnier there. Uh, but that's a, a cultural thing. I think that's that's the the nature of, of doing a show in different languages and in different countries. You always find these uh, moments where you go like, oh, people here perceive things slightly in a different. different way. Yeah, but it's uh, it's all good. It's all good. Okay, now so uh, we do have an awesome question here, but the live at five is they love asking this question. Okay. On stage mishaps. Have you ever had a trick go wrong on uh, stage? Uh, no not thing. necessarily. Not necessarily going wrong, but not going according to the plan, plan, which is very uh, different and than you going do, And you just but you cover it up like all you improvise. That's that's you're why you're theatrical. You're an actor. You're professional. You just go through it. It's that's why you improvise. Yes, that's a, that's the moment where you improvise. So for for those people in that show, they thought that probably that's the way that he normally you're goes. Supposed yes. to go. Yes. Uh, so yeah, that happens. Is your heart in your mouth a bit? You're thinking, oh no. It's completely honest, I love because part of the show is very dependable on the audience. Every day I'm improvising in different ways. So like it's either because of what they say to me, their answers, the way they interact with me. Uh, so I like that feeling yeah. of being like I'm here today now with you, and I don't know what's gonna happen. So when you to on top of that you add that there is like a little mistake or something that was off what you normally do, that just creates. Uh, even a little bit more conscious of that, like, okay, okay, what are we doing now? So, but I like it actually. Don't now, mind. we've had quite a few magicians come to Broadway. Um, I'm thinking of you know, the Illusionists, they seem to come back yeah. every year. Magic is also incredibly popular. Is, is coming to Broadway at some point something that you'd love to do? To Broadway? to Broadway, too. to be honest or do with you, you prefer the smaller venues? I like smaller venues, yeah. I, I, I like that intimate feeling because yeah. I think that's when you really experience magic the way I like magic. So, uh, so I, I, I would consider doing a bigger venue, but I don't think like a 2000 seat uh, yeah. house is something I, I'm that interested in. How does it go with your friends? Because, I mean, are, are people coming up to you the whole time and your friends going, Show me a trick? Here are some cards. My you friends do don't do me. that. My they friends don't do that. No, my friends don't do that because they either they, they already saw enough shows of mine they or, no or, in or they already they already are part. But when I meet someone and I talk, tell them also what you do and I tell them that yeah. I'm a magician, that's when normally people go like, Oh, show me something, show me <laughs> something. And what we are, what people don't understand is just like any other performance, not every time is a good time to yeah. see magic. You know, you have to have kind of this feeling and environment and conditions. To, to be able to experience that. So normally, I either arrange the conditions for, for be able to do it, or I very politely say, this is not the right move. So sadly, Live at Fivers, I don't think these conditions are the right. They are they're not, not, they're not. They're not yeah. conducive. They are not. To my, but I do, I mean, I do get it, because, you know, performers, they often have a ritual in yes. the dressing room to get themselves into the zone. Do Absolutely. you have that to get yourself... I do. I like. Stage. I like to focus. I don't have yeah. like a ritual in the sense that I, I meditate or anything. No, but I mean, I told all sorts of women. Um, ben Wisher told me he has he has a crystal that he holds. Oh, that's so no, every, everybody has has a different me, way of getting into For me, it's just getting inside of my head and yeah. going over little things of the show uh, and focusing and and being complete silence. That's what I like. So, what do you hope audiences take away with them from Verso? I think there are different things you can take away. There is, of course, the magic part, which is just impossibilities per se, but there is a story going on. Not a story in the sense that, oh, this happened and then this happened, but every little routine has its own little story and its own little idea behind, and then they, they, they congregate in the ending to, to, to give a special message, I think. Holder, thank you so much for My stopping pleasure. by. Everybody get no, yourselves you to much. New World Stages 
um, and have a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week live at 5 or 6.